Five upcoming cars I'm excited for. Let's start off the one that everyone expects me to talk about and is on the thumbnail, that is the Nissan 400Z. I'm definitely later to this news than everyone else, so I'll make up for it by talking about four other cars I'm excited for. But about the 400Z, all I have to say is, wow, Nissan? I'm so ridiculously proud of you guys. This is a Japanese company that really understands JDM culture. They understood what makes people love JDM cars, what makes people love their sports cars, the heritage, the lineage, that all comes before. The retro design has worked for American cars. Like people, when they lost interest in the Mustang and the Camaro and the Challenger, with those two were actually canceled, the Mustang is the only ongoing one. America's like, hey, what made our cars so special? They're like, let's just own up to the bulky square design of our cars and just modernize it. Having said that, Nissan understood that. They're like, hey, let's also do a retro callback. Instead of Acura and Toyota, I shouldn't say Acura and Honda because NSX is jointly developed by them, but both those companies completely just spat on the lineage, the heritage, the nameplate, and the legacy of all the previous customers' wishes, but also all the previous designers' wishes. The dead may not be able to speak, but Nissan did their best to understand what they would say. They looked at all the previous designs of the Fair Lady, of the Z lineup, and took it to heart. Instead of insulting those previous designers, they said, let's make a glorious just song, a masterpiece in memory of them. And that came out to be the 400Z. I never really found the 350 or 370Z as proper Fair Ladies when you compare them to their beginning, but I didn't see them as too far from the lineage to be offensive. And combining that modern style that those cars had, the 350 and 370, with the charm and elegance and luxury of the 240, 280, it makes this very beautiful. Really, it's just a masterpiece. Thank you, Nissan. This looks beautiful. And it doesn't have any stupid fake vents. It's not overly try hard and edgy like the Supra and NSX trying to be. It's also not overpriced like the Supra and NSX were. This is a car from a company that is fully self aware of what car guys want. And from a company that has been bashed for making crappy CVTs, and they fully deserve to be bashed over that, it's a breath of fresh air that they're like, look, six speed manual. Acura, they didn't give you that in the NSX. Toyota, they didn't give you that in the Supra, but we're going to give it to you here. Thank you, Nissan. Thank you. Nissan still understands, and I'm glad they do because they kind of need it right now. Their company isn't doing so great, so they do need to actually listen to consumers, and I like that. When you're pushed to the brink of failure, you come up with the great successes. Good job, Nissan. Ford Mustang Mach 1. This car is the least exciting car on this list, and the only reason I'm excited for it is because I just want to buy one used. <laughs> I really don't care. Don't even expect me to. I'm not even going to buy it within the first year, the first two years, probably not even the first five years. This is going to be a car I'm going to thrash around when it's like seven to ten years used. It's just a part spin Shelby, but to be fair, every Mach 1 has been a part spin Mustang, and this car takes, I don't even need to talk about its specs because it's its underwhelming for how overpriced this car is. That's my only gripe with it is its price, but I'm just going to solve that by not buying it new. I'm not going to be a dumb fanboy who fronds at the mouth. Older Mach 1s used to straight up have Shelby blocks in them, like the actual engine. Now we're just talking about very little bitty things here. It's way too underpowered for its price. It's too closely priced to the Shelby for how basically how much of a mirror image it is to the Bullet and Performance Pack 2, which are current Mustangs already exist and are much cheaper. Yeah, I'm just gonna buy one used. That's, that's what I'm excited for about this car. I'm not actually excited for its brand new release. Could just go nuts over it. It's not worth paying its new price. I can't even believe how, if anyone buys this for markup, they are actually stupid. But you know what? That's not my problem. And the next car on this list is the car I'm the most excited for. Did you guess the C8 Z06? Well, that is on this list, but believe it or not, that is not the one I'm most excited for. It is the Maserati MC20. Maserati, the drunken failure of an older sister that is constantly partying and wasted and just somewhere in an alley. Her younger sister Ferrari had to shoulder her and take her home every single night, but it looks like that older sister finally went to rehab. By the way, for people who are like, Bladed, why do you call Maserati the older sister? Ferrari's the more successful one. Ferrari wasn't always more successful, and rather, I should say, the more literal thing. There are so many people who comment that, who don't understand that Maserati is literally more than a century old. They're one of the oldest companies. Yes, they're the older sister. There was a time when they were the racing kings, where Ferrari looked up to them, but now that has flipped to an insane degree. Like, Maserati doesn't look up to Ferrari, she's kissing her little sister's feet like, give me a new engine, I promise I won't break it, and then she goes and breaks it. Maserati has been disappointing for the past 15 years, and honestly, even when the MC12, their last great car, was out, their company was still kind of not quite the level Ferrari was. It's been a long time since Maserati has actually been as good as her sister, 
The MC-20 features an engine called the Natuno, and this platform does share some components of Ferrari and Alfa, but for Maserati, I, you know, for an exotic, more exorbitantly priced, especially something that's meant to be bespoke, they can't just take whole engines from another company. So I'm okay if it's just using a few parts. The Natuno otherwise is fully built in house and fully engineered and designed by Maserati. It's been a hot minute since Maserati has actually designed something. It's always been Ferrari has been the one designing things and then would don't basically just throw it at her older sister like, all right, get yourself together, <laughs> do something with this. The 4.7 modular that has been in the, which is now the outgoing MC Stradale, that was a disappointing car. When the MC Stradale came out, it was not deserving the MC nameplate. I know that's really, really harsh, but the MC-12 to me was the last good MC until this 20 came out. Because the MC Stradale for the Gran Turismo, it was overpriced. We're talking 180 grand for a four and a half second car for Chrysler interior. Really, that Chrysler technology, not even Chrysler technology, just had bad outdated technology, bad outdated, poor quality interior, horrible, unreliable engine. It somehow made a Ferrari engine more unreliable than they already are. That's, that's a mind-blowing achievement from Maserati. It sounded good, that was the only good thing, but it was overpriced. And there's always those people who are like, Bladed, you're just a hater, and you always find them in comments. You don't pay attention to interiors and cars like that, you're not a car guy if you do. Uh, when you pay 180 grand, you will pay attention to the interior. You're allowed to have criticism for it because you paid, oh, you know, 180 grand. It's like building a computer for like four to five grand and not caring about how the wiring looks. You will care about aesthetics as well as, let's be real, interior does help with functionality and ergonomics of the car as well, especially the technological side of it. You want the latest and greatest in a latest model car. It was disappointing a 2017 Maserati had 2008 technology it was stupid so for the mc20 to just brush all that off this is so uncharacteristic for maserati in a good way it actually it is characteristic it's characteristic of the true maserati not of the butchered fiat chrysler disgusting whatever you want to call them this is them whoever is at maserati they're strong arming fiat chrysler they're probably finally saying like look this is this doesn't make any sense from a budgeting standpoint but we want to get our pride back damn it 620 horsepower twin turbo v6 dual combustion chambers it's not a v8 I was disappointed at first, but then I saw the V6, very well engineered, engineer explained his video about it. It's 215 grand, which I'm going to say, damn good price. This car, styling wise, I love it. Some people don't like the way the bottom portion of it looks, I think it looks fine. The top half of this car, I love the rear especially, that looks like the outgoing MC Stradale for the Gran Turismo, just it's lowered, it's wider, and it's more aggressive, and I love that. The diffuser looks like the outgoing MC Stradale's combined with some of the 48 piece does. And I love it too. The front of this car, very simple, very elegant. This is a car that still looks very elegant, but also very fast. In a day and age where every supercar is so angular, so try hard, so edgy, so oh, like they're just mad at life. This is a car that is curvier, it's softer, and it's simpler. And simple isn't always a bad thing, because if you don't need something there, then don't put anything there. Because I'm glad I'd rather a car have be simple than have fake fence. You know, I'm totally okay with how this car looks. Not just okay, rather. I don't even think it's good, I think it's great. This is just a great looking car, great looking performance with a great price. The interior looks pretty good too. I'll hear more about its parts when the car actually comes out. Please, Maserati, do not mess up the interior. It does matter on a 215 grand car. This is a car that is proper supercar territory in its price with proper supercar performance. Thank you, Maserati. So it's not a secret that the C8 is a total departure from the Corvette lineage, but it is not spitting on the Corvette lineage. Because a lot of companies when they depart from the original heritage, they do it to save money. They're like, oh, we couldn't afford to make it as good as it used to be, so we have to blur the lines and depart from its original heritage. But the C8 was the opposite. It, it was actually the original heritage, the original platform, were so outdated, they had to finally just overhaul everything. Yeah, it's mid-engine now. Yeah, it's not on leaf springs anymore. Yeah, it's not a push rod anymore. It's a flat plane V8 that revs to 9,000 RPM. That's insane. They're going to keep it NA2, which means it might have less horsepower than my current C7 Z06. And I'm actually okay with it because Z06s were known to be naturally aspirated. Mine was an anomaly. In fact, mine was too overpowered to the point Motor Trend was like, this really didn't need the supercharger. It doesn't have the downforce to handle it. And the ZR, and it also overheated because of it. So it didn't take until the ZR1 where they fixed overheating and the downforce and added more power because why not hurt her ZR1? <laughs> but the Z06 2017 where they addressed the overheating a little bit, but it was all just band-aids here and there. It was kind of a model that was forgotten by Chevy. But this time with the C8, I hope they do not 
not do that. I hope this is a total swan song. I'm so excited to see how fast the Z06 can be, how insane it can be, how much it can be built, how amazing it's going to sound, how different it's going to be from any Corvette ever. Because the C8 Stingray was still a pushrod. That's what made it still feel like a Corvette. But I saw the C8R drive on road Atlanta, and I was sad. I was genuinely shocked to not feel Corvette Thunder. Because Corvette Thunder is not something you hear, it's something you feel. It literally shakes your heart, it quakes as it passes. If I'm correct, the Corvette C7R was the last pushrod to ever race in GTLM. It, it's gone. The only time you'll see pushrods now is in NASCAR. And that broke my heart, knowing that pushrods are just, this is it. Once the C8 Z06, this is, it's sad. I'm so proud, but I'm also sad. I'm sad to see Corvettes basically no longer be pushrods. And I really, really am so conflicted with this car. I'm excited for every single step it's going to take towards its future. It's not disrespecting the past, so to speak. It's waving goodbye to it. This is a car that finally said, Hey, I enjoyed everything there is to enjoy out of being a front-engine car. I reached its limits. I enjoyed everything I could out of a pushrod, but that couldn't do anything more for me. I, try I pushed those leaf springs as much as I could, but they weren't quite gripping on me. I have to say goodbye to it all. And the C8 Z06 is that farewell. And I love it for that. I love and hate it for that. The final car on this list is a much simpler car and a car that most of you watching are probably excited for due to the fact that it's one that's actually relevant to you since you can actually afford it. And that is the Toyota GR86. This is a Turbo 86. Finally, thank you Toyota and Subaru as well since Subaru will be doing this to their BRZ according to all the information as well. And they're still sharing the platform. That's beautiful. I'm okay with that. Just thank you guys for finally giving us the turbo car we've been asking for. The turbo entry level sports car that we've been asking for. Because yeah, you can go buy Supra now that the Supra Supra's back, but the Hachi Roku was in desperate need of a turbo, and for 30 grand estimated price, worth it. Great price, Toyota. Thank you. You did not f this up. I do not want this car to be priced like how you did with the stupid Supra. You overpriced the crap out of that car. Uh, it's gonna be turbo to 260 to 300, according to the rumors. I think that's a healthy figure wherever it lands in that range. I, I would prefer higher. Like I think honestly, if they could get 300 out of the turbo, that for how nimble this chassis is, how lightweight it is. How how stiff it is, how rigid it is, and how well known it is for autocrossing as well as the wheelbase of this car, that's going to turn this into just a destroyer of worlds. Such a good entry level sports car and we need that. We need a low center gravity boxer engine, entry level rear wheel drive sports car. Please still give it a manual Toyota because the automatics in these cars are known to be slower than the manuals. It's one of those few cars that for whatever reason still has the auto slower. <laughs> Speaking of which, Toyota, if you do put an automatic in it, please make it a DCT now. I think with a turbo, it can benefit from having a DCT. For the new price of 30 grand, I would like to see it have a DCT. And it looks like they're refreshing the car from an appearance standpoint. I don't want it to look too much like the Supra. I don't like the renderings where it looks basically like a mini Supra. Don't do that, please. Toyota, please don't do that. <laughs> Just keep it what the GT86 was, what the Hachi Roku was, and just amplify it just a little bit. You know, just take it up like one or two notches from there. Do not superify this car, okay? The prestige, like people who want the Supra want to feel special and different from all the Hachiroku buyers because the Hachiroku is going to be more prevalent, it's going to be more common, it's cheaper, so obviously there's going to be more of them. So it deserves to look more derpy, if that makes sense. It's supposed to look more derpy, it's supposed to look more cute, younger, it's supposed to look like the little brother to the Supra. It's not supposed to look all beefed up and angry and... And the appearance of the 8.6 I always thought was beautiful already, so it's something that I don't want them to mess with too much if it's already so beautiful. That's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to check out my other videos as well. I like to talk about cars in general, so just hang out for stuff like that. And tell me what car you are the most excited for in the comment sections below, but these were the five I was the most excited for. Other than that, see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.